I'm playing Tau today, fast at enclaves, and I'm remembered to bring my flying stance. Hello, my name's Jordan. On to semi-final game two, I think it is. Alright, so it's semi-final today. Playing against Custodes. Um, I always have fun playing against Custodes. I've played against the more than Marines in 9th edition, so pretty experienced with the uh, matchup, I guess. Uh, uh, and in terms of how the tournament's going so far, really enjoying it so far. I didn't get crushed by Mortarian, so it's always amazing. And my other two goals were to defuse someone with the Tau Charge, which I haven't done yet, and also just to have fun, which we're still doing. Jordan's a great guy, so. All right, some of you might be confused by the purple Riptide. If you remember from last game, it was red. Um, so I didn't do a complete paint job overnight. Um, so yeah, I've only been playing for a year. When I first got into the game and started going to tournaments, I didn't have a Riptide because of supply chain issues with COVID and whatnot. So I actually borrowed Jordan's Riptide. So I've played with Jordan's Riptide more than my own. And purely for this game, we've just decided to run Jordan's Riptide instead of mine, just because it's fun. Um, ready to face some Tao and probably get my butt kicked by my own Riptide actually. For this tournament, my goal was to have fun and that is definitely happening. I know Coop is a great guy and it's gonna be fantastic to just play a game against him. I'm looking forward to the match. Welcome back 40k fans to semi-final game 2 of the Banya Batra beatdown. As you know, the Tau were able to defend themselves against the disgusting Death Guard led by Mortarian. And the Custodes have also recently taken control of Craft World Ill Solace and purged the Xenos. But maybe not for much longer, as the Tau have seen an opportunity to take another forward post in this war for Pavonis. And they approach Craft World Ill Solace at speed, ready to take these Golden Warriors down. Today's game is Battle Lines. As usual, both players will score points through primary and secondary objectives, with primary awarding 5 points for holding 1, 10 for holding 2, and another 5 for holding more than their opponent in each of their command phases, for a maximum of 15 points each round, and 45 throughout the game. Each player will also select 3 secondaries, rewarding up to 15 points each. Alright, so for secondaries, I'm going for my classic trio of Scramblers while we stand, we fight and engage. Uh, Scramblers is very easy to score against Custodes considering how thin their army is. It's very hard for them to screen out um, deploying in their backfield. While we stand, we fight, it's always a good take on my list. I suppose it didn't really show against the Death Guard, but I usually score 10 or 15 points for it. And I think Custodes will struggle to get the Riptide down with their... They don't really have a lot of shooting compared to a lot of armies. So it's pretty easy to keep a Riptide safe and then engage is just engage with all those two Mandarin units, it's really easy to score. So for my second days in this game, I have taken Vital Ground, Grind Them Down, and Domination. Vital Ground I think is going to be really interesting for me, because it's literally hold um, the two objectives in the center of the field and the one in my opponent's field. I've got a lot low model count, so that should be fairly easy for me to achieve, I'm hoping. Um, grind Them Down is a fantastic objective against Cooper's army, because he has lots of two man drones. His benefit for his secondaries is my benefit for mine as well. And then domination is hold more object oh sorry, hold more than half of the objectives on the field, which is I think three in this game. That's gonna be really easy to get with my other secondaries and just the primary objectives. So it should be fairly easy to accomplish all of them and be interesting to see how it goes. Five. I got 
fourth. I'm first. Hi first, I'm Cooper. Oh, hi Cooper. How did I? <laughs> and with that, we move on to Custody's turn one. Jordan begins his turn one by moving everything forward into the midboard. One unit of guards stay behind to hold his own objective, while the grav carrier shields the path for his terminators, two characters and bikers. And a lone unit of guard with two shields move up Jordan's left flank at the top of the board. Jordan has his Venatari in the transport and four more guard with Melter Spears in deep strike reserve. With thankfully no psychic phase this game from either player, we can move into the first shooting phase. Jordan had planned to kill at least one piranha, and his first shots from the grav tank did just that. With two hits and wounds, the piranha gets no save and goes down. The bikers then finish off the two disembarking drones, and two melter missiles go into the devilfish. Jordan rolls a five for damage on two wounds that pass through, and decides to re-roll the two into a one. Yeah. Please be higher. No, nope. it's a one. Uh, it's lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. His only other shooting comes from the guard on his own objective, who are in range for some heavy bolters onto Cooper's other piranha. Three wounds pass through, and Cooper just needs one five plus save. Kill it. <laughs> okay. Roll it. Does it explode? Yes! <laughs> he doesn't get it and it dies, even exploding onto everything within three inches for one mortal wound. With a successful first turn complete, it's Cooper's turn to retaliate. In Cooper's movement phase, he plays very carefully not to give away any free charges for Jordan's next turn. Defending his back zone so Jordan cannot deep strike there, and moving this devilfish out into the open to stop the bikes from landing there in Jordan's movement phase. Some breaches get out of the devilfish in the top right and take this point away from Jordan with objective secure. And before Cooper's castle shuffles forward, leaving the riptide out in front to shield against any charges with supporting fire on overwatch, two units of breaches take teleporter pads to the other sides of the board to give Cooper engage on all fronts this turn. For those who don't know, we have enabled additional house rules for these terrain pieces as there really is nothing like it in the rulebook. If you'd like to find out more, you can check out part two of the build video for this terrain here on this channel. Moving swiftly onto the shooting phase, Cooper begins by spending a CP for aerial spotters onto this unit of guard to give them a single marker light. And the Devilfish breaches and both Cold Star commanders open them up with barrage after barrage, leaving just one spear custodian left. We know what happens when we leave one custodian alive. Unleash the lions. <laughs> <laughs> I've been tempted to use that so many With times. With only the Riptide being able to see them due to the obscuring terrain, Cooper moves onto his only other shooting and leaves the Riptide till last. Next up, the Cyclic Enforcer Commander spends a CP to reroll all wounds and fires into Jordan's grab tank, doing a huge 9 damage. With hope now inside of killing it, Cooper's two broadsides fire into it, getting only one wound through where Cooper rolls a 1 for the damage on a d6 damage weapon. Okay, no, 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 so Jordan spends two CP for the Custodes version of Transhuman Physiology, meaning Cooper can only wound him on a 4+. Yeah, yep. so 4-3 rolling ones? Yep. Uh, he rolled no one. One, one hit? There you go. I've already re-rolled this turn. No one fails to wound. And with an abysmal roll, he manages to survive the onslaught. With Cooper's turn all said and done, 
Jordan spends 3 CP this round, taking him down to 8 remaining, giving him 3 points this turn for grind them down. Whilst Cooper also spent 3 CP, taking him down to just 5 remaining, also giving him 3 victory points for engage in all fronts. In turn 2, Jordan will only score 5 points for primary for holding his back objective, as we see how he can break through Cooper's blockade. Alright, um, so turn one is always weird against Custodes, um, you kind of shoot them knowing that you're not going to kill anything, but it's about getting as much damage down as possible. And I was happy with the amount of damage I got down. Uh, now that he's starting to move closer, I'm going to actually start to get a little more into him. Uh, and it's just about making sure that I have, uh, if I am burning in one car, it's not getting followed up the next turn. Um, so we'll see how this next turn goes. Things might get weird very quickly from here though. So that turn went surprisingly well actually. I got two kills on Piranhas, which is sweet for, sweet for my grind them down. I've got myself lined up for domination with the one standing custody left in that squad. And he is raring to get some revenge on those Tau. I've got a couple of tricks up my sleeves with tapping a couple of units. Hopefully they'll work. Like, this is Tau after all. We don't know what's going to happen. Don't haven't played them much, so... This will be a very interesting turn too, let's see how it goes. It starts to heat up in turn 2 as Jordan's bikers are closing in on the ranks of Cooper's Tower. The guard remains safe on the backfield objective and Jordan decides that he will not deep strike his 4 Melter Spears this turn. The lone remaining Custodian moves towards those breaches in search of revenge. And the Terminators and characters move up to guard point 4. Watching as the Venatari disembark from the Coronis, activate their wings and look to make a charge on the Riptide. To start off the shooting phase, the bikes lead the charge by putting their bolters into two gun drones behind the Riptide and the Melter Missiles into the Riptide itself. Both of the drones die of course, and only one Melter Missile manages to wound, which is then passed off to a drone through Savior Protocols. The tank fires its dispersion mode onto the two shielded missile drones which come with the Riptide, and the smaller guns it has into the remaining drone from the unit of two that just saved a Melter Missile, killing all three. Next up, Jordan spends 2 CP to give the Venatari double shots and 6s to hit our automatic wounds and pumps 2 of them into each of Cooper's broadsides, leaving one of them on 2 wounds remaining and killing the other one. Before we can enter the charge phase, the lads on the back point just chip two more wounds off the wounded devilfish. After the bikes went into the devilfish safely, there was a blistering amount of overwatch, as the Venatari attempted to charge the cyclic commander and the riptide. Hey, I've got two dead so far. Two are dead, and that's the CP for Cooper? Yep. And then the crisis. Yep, fire away. I'm hoping these guys will do it. That many D6? Yep. After Cooper's entire army had overwatched, Two of the Venatari had died on their way in, as both Cooper and Jordan spent a CP reroll for saves and damage. And lastly, this lone custodian guard attempted a charge onto the Breaches, who fired Overwatch. Uh, That's enough. Three. <laughs> That's enough. It is enough. <laughs> Three's rerolling ones. <laughs> Three wounds. Three wounds. If all these go through, you die. I know. Uh, Minus two. Four ups. <laughs> oh! Yes! oh my god! No! What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Wow! Oh, that is so disappointing! Now you don't get domination and I score 10 primary! And they manage to kill him off before he can make it in! Go Breaches go! As expected, the bikes manage to cleave this poor transport in half and it doesn't explode, only losing one drone of four as it crashes to the ground. But the Venatari get to swing next into the cyclic commander, doing three more wounds to leave him with just two remaining. Hilariously, the commander also does a single wound back to the Venatari and the rest of Cooper's units just gently pat the custodians for 
zero damage. This leaves those Venatari with five wounds left total, and Koopa standing on objective one for his next turn primary. After scoring 10 points for primary, Koopa elects to use Montcar this turn and backs away from the Venatari so he can still shoot this turn. Everything in Koopa's top right shuffles forwards and those battle scarred breaches fan out, watching as another five of their kind come in from reinforcements. Those very breaches complete the Deploy Scramblers action in the midboard, as the breaches who took the teleporter to Jordan's zone in turn 1 did the turn before. Meaning that Cooper only needs his own zone for the last action and 10 more points. Another 3 Crisis Suits also come in from reserve in Jordan's deployment zone and eye down those Custodians guarding point 2, which leads us onto the shooting phase. We begin with the air bursting crisis suits, the breaches in the back, and the last broadside who all fire into the two man Venatari unit. Jordan contemplates a reroll to save one of them, but he lets it pass as the broadside finishes them off. Next, Cooper spends a CP to give his cyclic Enforcer Commander reroll all wounds again into Jordan's tank on seven wounds. But this time, Jordan spends two CP to negate all rerolls against it, which pays off greatly. Overcharging, this is strength eight. Yep. Come on, roll a one, roll a one. No. All uh, hit? Yeah. yeah. Wounds on force? <gasps> it happened Whoa. again! It happened again! It happened again! Oh, oh, yeah. I don't have no. Nah! TV damage. Ah! The tank takes another three wounds and goes down to just four remaining. And seeing as the Riptide does D3 plus three damage, Cooper fires into the tank as well while overcharging doing a wound to himself, but bringing the tank down in the process. Nah. Okay, no, uh, minimum damage kills. On a 60 bar. Do I explode? Yay! Do you blow up? <laughs> Unfortunately for Jordan, it also explodes, hitting his Vexilla and Captain for one mortal wound, his Terminators for three mortal wounds, a drone unit for one mortal wound, and the Riptide for another two. Cooper then looks downfield as he spends another CP for aerial targeting again on the Custodian Guard on point two. The missile commanders then take turns alongside nine flamers from the newly arrived Crisis Suits. Jordan spends another two CP for Transhuman, but still takes a whopping seven damage total, killing two and leaving one on two wounds remaining. Pretty good. Yep. Okay, so those are all one up, uh, two ups. <laughs> one ups. I'm glad he's taking that. Thank you. Uh, I take sorry. one, two, three, four. four. Oh, that's four. One. one more's dead. With no morale and no charges to be made at the end of Cooper's turn, Jordan has spent a whopping 7 CP this round, taking him down to 2 remaining, giving him 8 points along the way. 5 for primary and another 3 for grind them down, for killing more units than Cooper. While Cooper only spent 3 CP, taking him down to 3 remaining and gained 13 points this round. 10 for primary and another 3 for engage on all fronts yet again. At the beginning of turn 3, Jordan will score 12 points. 10 for primary and another 2 for vital ground on point 4. Remember when I said that game's gonna get weird? Well, it currently looks like we're literally about to swap deployment zones, uh, so that's always fun when that happens, especially Tau and Custodes. Custodes are a slow army, Tau, you know, very much stick to their own backfield. So the fact that we're about to switch like deployment zones on turn 3 is like absolutely ridiculous. In terms of shooting Overwatch, I've never rolled Overwatch that well before, so it felt great. Usually my Overwatch is like terrible, but. That was something else. Um, and yeah, so I killed enough that I'm happy with where I am. I kind of just know that my Riptide's gonna be tagged for the rest of the game, but whatever. Um, it's probably gonna die, but I think my Cold Star Commanders can just run across to the other side of the board and not get targeted anyway. So let's see how this game goes. Well, that went to head in the handbasket kind of quickly. Um, so turn two is done and I lost a lot more than I was hoping to gain out of it. Some unlucky rolls on my part, lucky rolls on Cooper's part. Um, losing the Custodian Guard on that charge was just plain ridiculous. Shouldn't happen. 
and it was losing the Venatari as well hurt. But I always knew they were kind of going to be a sacrificial lamb once I didn't kill that commander. It was always going to be a, they're here to die now guys. The tank dying also hurt. I'm now in a really, really bad position. Uh, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, maybe. If I can pull off a few tricks, put some pressure onto his home objective, and score a bit more points, but at the moment, it's looking dire. So let's see how the next turn goes. In the mid-game turn, Jordan attempts to close out Cooper by shuffling those bikers forwards into the Riptide and Cyclic Commander. The Vexilla guards point four as the Captain and the Terminators shuffle forwards as well. And lastly, the Melter Boys deep strike in the middle of the table, trying to make a charge onto the Breaches on point one. The shooting phase begins with Jordan shooting some bolt rounds from the Captain and Terminators into the broadside. With only two wounds left, Cooper manages to fail exactly two saves and decides to conserve some CP by letting it die. Hey, it's just enough! <laughs> Put side down! Okay. What is happening in this game? The boys in the back on point two turn around and don't like the cut of these crisis suits jibs. So they kindly kill off two of their drones and an entire suit. And the bikers shoot all their melters into a riptide shield generator for zero damage. But with hurricane bolters, they manage to vaporize five breaches in the back with weight of dice. Jordan's last bit of shooting came from the newly arrived Melter Boys, who put three into the fish and one into the Riptide. The Riptide did need to CP a save roll to pass, but unfortunately for Jordan, he only got one wound through on the fish. However, it did do a total of five damage. In the charge phase, the Melter Boys use one CP for the Light of Thor from Asgard to get a 3d6 charge discarding the lowest. And even then, they needed a reroll to make it onto point one, where they have course quickly cut down all of those poor breaches. The bikers go into the commander and the riptide needing a 7 and just make it on a 7, surprisingly taking 0 damage from the commander and riptide on overwatch. And the captain attempts a 10 inch charge but falls 1 inch short. Hashtag custodies problems. In combat, the bikers put everything into the Riptide aside from one biker into the commander. The commander luckily survives and the Riptide also luckily passes everything except for one save, which does the max of three damage, bringing the tide down to six wounds remaining. The Riptide doesn't like this very much and fly kicks one of them in the face for a huge one damage in return. Bringing us to Cooper's turn three, where he actually elects to stay in combat with the Riptide, as his relic ion cannon is not a blast weapon, and so can be fired in combat. The Flamer Crisis suits jump forwards towards point two, and essentially every model Cooper has on the top half of the board congeals onto point one to surround those custodies. The plan here is to trap them in combat with the drones and fish and hold the point with the objective secured breaches. Lastly, the cyclic commander falls back to be safe against the bikers and Cooper's last unit of breaches come down from strategic reserve in his back zone to complete his last action for deploy scramblers, giving him another 10 points. An absolute cracker of a shooting phase commences, with Cooper shooting his flamers and both commanders into the custodies on point two, even paying a CP to reroll all wounds with one of the commanders. <laughs> Did it work? No, uh, I missed two. Uh, is this from both commanders? This is one commander. So oh. it's rerolling wounds. Oh my god! No wounds? Wow! All three rerolled into a fail. Yeah. One wound. Four pinball? And he still manages to fail every single one, meaning those custodies take zero damage from everything. Even worse, the breaches, drones, and devilfish all fire into the melter boys on point one and only manage to get two wounds through. However, the crisis suits down bottom do manage to get one wound through on the terminators actually killing a model after he had taken those three mortal wounds from the explosion. And the Riptide fires into the bikers in combat, getting three wounds on them, forcing Jordan to reroll a save after failing all three. Cooper was however trying to conserve wounds without overcharging and so only one bike died and one was left on one wound which only had to pass one more 2 plus save from the SMS. Yeah, just roll a 1 please, 2 up. 
<laughs> oh, oh, oh no. Ridiculous. In the charge phase, Cooper actually did charge both his drone units and the Devilfish into the Melters on point one, tagging them down. They did hit back, killing two of the drones and doing four wounds to the Devilfish, leaving it on three remaining, in an attempt to break out of combat before Jordan's next turn. And as for the bikers and all the Tau units, they all completely whiffed. So to end turn three, Jordan had spent three more CP, meaning that he is now out of CP until his next turn, giving him a pretty big 18 points this round. 10 for primary, 3 for domination and grind them down, and 2 more for holding point 0.4 for vital ground. Whilst Cooper only spent 2 CP, leaving him on 2 remaining and gaining 13 points. 10 for scramblers, and 3 for engage once more, but unfortunately missing any points for primary on his turn. To begin Jordan's next turn, he will be scoring the big 15 points, as he holds 3 of the 4 points. So that shooting phase went terribly. There's something very Warhammer about setting up, you know, your all plans and then you fail to wound a single model and then you sit in the corner and cry. The game kind of flipped on its head after that. Uh, I think Jordan's got the lead now. Um, it's going to be very weird to see how things go from here. There's some weird plays that can happen and some dice rolls will come very clutch in these last few rounds because if someone's dice just fails on a turn, the game's over. And so, yeah, I just hope that I get the luck that I didn't have against Tate. Swings and roundabouts. Turn three was interesting to say at the least. I have actually taken the lead somehow now. It's very close though. I have very, very few units on the board and there's a lot of gunfire that can still happen and murder pretty much my entire army. But there's a shot. There is a silver lining and I am grabbing onto it and hoping it's gonna work. Let's see how turn four goes. Beginning the long slog that is turn 4 with a few shuffles from Jordan's Golden Boys. He attempts to maintain his hold of these objectives. The Terminators go for a jog towards the airburst crisis suits in the bottom corner. The Vexilla holds his own on point 4 and the Captain Commander leads his own charge against the Riptide to rescue his bikers. Starting the shooting phase with him, both his grenade launcher and his bolter do absolutely nothing to the mighty armor of the shield drones behind this riptide. The terminators push three damage with their grenade launchers and bolters onto the crisis suits killing one of them. And the sagittarium on point two shoot across the board into some breaches for five wounds. One is passed to a drone, three more are saved and only one breacher is killed. Meaning that Jordan will have to do his dirty work in the assault phase. The captain commander takes a wound on his way in against the riptide from a supporting fire, overwatching cyclic commander cowering behind it. The Sagittarium go in against the Flamer Crisis Suits, losing one of them and bringing the other one down to two wounds remaining. And the Terminators go into the Crisis Suits on a 9 inch charge, swinging first to kill only one of them, as Cooper realizes he forgot he had an Iridium suit in this squad. The last Sagittarium Custode does nothing to the suits, who also do nothing back. But hilariously, the drone bonks him on the head for one wound. Hits. Wounds. Two of armor. <laughs> Ouch! Suck on that! <laughs> Combat drone. <laughs> Over at the combat on point one, the Melter Boys go two and two into the last drone and the Devilfish killing the drone and only just killing the fish with one wound, who then consolidate into every single one of Cooper's units so they cannot shoot next turn and they of course do zero damage back to the custodies in combat. And with our last combat involving this Riptide on four wounds, the bikers and the Riptide do nothing to each other and the Captain Commander only does one wound which is then passed to a drone. Easy peasy. Leading us quickly to the bottom of turn 4 with Cooper's turn. With little left to move, the Iridium Airburst suit falls back just so it doesn't die. The breaches fall back and just hold point 1 as best as they can. The cyclic commander gets line of sight onto Jordan's Vexilla on point 4 and the Riptide continues to hold the line against these bikes and captain.
But most importantly, the two Cold Star Commanders worth 5 points each vanish behind terrain in the top left corner to guarantee some points. And in Cooper's second last shooting phase, the Riptide goes first into the two remaining bikers, only killing one of them off and leaving just one left. Cooper then spends his last 2 CP on giving reroll hits of 1 and all wound rolls to the Cyclic Commander, who gives it his all to kill the Vexilla off point 4. He only barely does enough damage with 3d3 damage to kill him off, removing the threat from point 4. Well, it's really bad, anyway. Alright, so it's like a go? Yep, roll. Cool. Cool. I, I generally match the damage. damage. 5 damage. Oh, yeah. Lucky. Wow. I had CP, okay? okay? Yeah. I had a CP. Don't call me lucky. Which is all of Cooper's shooting. So Jordan spends the one CP he got this round to heroically intervene onto the breaches on point one to give him this objective at the beginning of the last turn, which are quickly cleaned away. Jordan also manages to kill off the drone that bonked him on the head last round in the threat of it doing it again, and luckily passes the one wound that the suits did to him in return. It's just a vault, come on, please walk. Please. Yeah, fine. All boiling down to the last combat with this Riptide. The Riptide and the Biker do nothing to each other once more, but the Captain Commander does manage to push through a normal wound and a double damage wound. The normal wound is passed to a drone, but the other wound... <gasps> and the normal saviors. Okay. So a drone dies, and yep. then you gotta pass your save. And then a 3-up involve for the double. And my last CP to re-roll that. Yep. Yep. Oh my god! This Riptide is hanging on to life by a thread. It's 2d3. Okay. I have to roll a 4. Which right. is average, but... You're gonna roll a 5 yeah. on 1. He's alive on a win! No! Oh my god! But he can't be a wow. To a end turn 4, Jordan of course is out of CP and gains a huge 26 points this round. 15 for primary, 5 for vital ground, 3 for domination and 3 more for grind them down. While poor Cooper spends 2 CP, leaving him on 1 left and only scores 8 points. 5 for primary and 3 more for engage thanks to those sneaky breaches sitting on the floating islands and drones in the corners. But in turn 5, Jordan is going to score that big 15 points again. So let's see if Cooper can bring it back. Before we move on to the final turn, we want to say thank you for watching the video. If you haven't yet subscribed, please, please do that down below. It's free and you can always unsubscribe later if you wish. We also have a Patreon campaign where you can support us for only $3 a month. It might be a small investment for you, but means an absolute world to us and allows us to make more videos for you guys. We also just want to say that unfortunately, the final video in this series is going to be a bit of a wait due to more personal matters that are unavoidable. We're terribly sorry and thank you for understanding. Don't forget all the other little jobs like Instagram and our partnered companies. And with that said and done, let's move on to turn five. Coming right down to turn 5, Jordan actually has nothing left to move, as all he needs to do is guard these objectives. The Terminators are the only unit who can shoot, and they make quick work of the last Crisis suit, before charging headfirst into the Cyclic Commander who, in classic Cooper fashion, kills himself. On point 2, the Crisis suits hit the last Sagittarium and fail to kill him yet again, and the guard only does one wound in return. Before we come to the all-important Riptide combat, Combat, where unsurprisingly the biker and the riptide do nothing to each other once more. And fortunately for Cooper, the captain commander only wounds twice and they're both passed to his three remaining drones nearby. So to conclude Cooper's turn 5, his crisis suits fall back onto the point while the two Cold Star commanders come out to play on points 2 and 4. The Riptide falls back, 
paying 2CP to act on full profile so he can move away and a handful of drones land on point 3. Cooper attempts to shoot this last biker off the point so that his drones can hold it at the end of the game. But Jordan passes all of his saves using his last reroll. So Cooper plays it safe and uses the second commander to finish the remaining wound on the Sagittarium Custodian. To wrap up the entire game, Jordan scores another huge 36 points, 15 for primary, 10 for painted, 5 for vital ground, 3 for grind them down, maxing it out, and 3 more for domination, ending his score on 91 points. While Cooper scores 38 points in round 5, 10 for primary, 15 for while we stand we fight, and his last 3 for engage, maxing all of his secondaries but unfortunately falling short on primary points for a total score of 75, meaning that Jordan is our winner and we'll move on to the final round against Jack and his brand new Drakari Codex. Well, that was a game. Uh, I think we can pretty much boil like the turning point of that game being that turn three shooting phase where I couldn't clear his back objective. Uh, running the math through my head, if everything else plays out, that is actually a 20 point swing overall, which is, you know, that's, that's actually the game. Um, but yeah, it was very fun the whole way through. Uh, enjoyed every moment of it. Unfortunately, now I'm out of the tournament. Uh, I think I scored more points than Neil though, so I get third, so bronze medal with towels. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, and yeah, it was a great one. I think I did make Jordan a little surprise with the charge, so I did make all three of my objectives in the end. Um, so yeah, thanks for having me along, Jackson, and yeah. Well, that went interestingly. So I did win in the end, which means I'm moving on to the finals. But overall, that was a very, very close game. Far closer than I was hoping it would be. It was a fun game, thankfully, so that was good. But unfortunately, I did not kill my Riptide and take him back, and that is a great sadness to me. Um, but it was just it was just a fun game. Yeah, <laughs> looking forward to the finals now, facing the Dark Elder with their shiny new codex. I am very scared, and we can see how it goes. All right, Jordan failed to take back his Riptide, so it's legally mine now. Very good. Do you want a cringy send off? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next time to see the final result in the near future. Thank you for watching, and with that, my name has been Jack. Peace.